hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so in the previous video we discussed uh, about uh, viscosity and uh, the concept of uh, Newton's law of viscosity which uh, correlates uh, shearing stress the relative velocities between the fluid layers the separation distance between those layers and viscosity together and we also discussed about kinematic viscosity so in this video we are going to uh, discuss about uh, the types of fluids we are going to classify fluids on the basis of viscosity and shear stress okay so before that we will just uh, have a quick look on uh, the previous things that viscosity which is the property of fluid which offers resistance or opposition between the fluid layers and it is a measure of the internal friction between the layers and uh, Newton's law of viscosity it states that the shear stress okay which uh, arises because of the relative velocity between fluid layers and the friction between the fluid layers that is directly proportional to the rate of change of velocity of the fluid layers with respect to the separation distance. So if we consider the top two layers with the separation distance of dy, the top two fluid layers with the separation distance let us say of dy and the velocity difference between them one is u other one is u plus du the, the difference in velocity is du so according to Newton's law of viscosity the shear stress tau is directly proportional to the rate of change of velocity with respect to the separation distance du by dy or we can say that tau is equal to mu du by dy where mu is the coefficient of viscosity or simply viscosity of the fluid or we can write viscosity as tau dy by du okay so this is Newton's law of viscosity is now we are going to discuss about the various types of fluids on the basis of viscosity and shear stress so we can categorize fluids as ideal fluid real fluid Newtonian fluid non-Newtonian fluid and ideal plastic fluid now we have already discussed about ideal and real fluid in short uh, now here we will discuss them again along with these other uh, categories so first is uh, ideal fluid now an ideal fluid is one which is incompressible and has no viscosity no viscosity means no shear stress the shear stress on the fluid ideal fluid is zero and it is incompressible okay it means the mass per unit volume is fixed it cannot be compressed it cannot change the density is fixed it cannot be changed it cannot be altered and it has no viscosity means no internal resistance no internal friction between fluid layers which in turn means the shear stress on the ideal fluid is zero now I already uh, said in the introductory video that this type of fluid does not exist it is for uh, for comparison purpose for 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 com uh, comparison with the reference this type of fluid does not exist it is imaginary next uh, so the for ideal fluids the shear stress is zero which means viscosity is also zero next we have is real fluid so a real fluid is one which possesses viscosity and has a finite shear stress acting on it it means the shear stress between the fluid layers the internal friction between the fluid layers exist which means the real fluids they have some amount of viscosity okay and uh, also real fluids are compressible to a small extent for liquids uh, the compressibility is to a small extent while gases they are compressible we all know that so 
the main thing about real fluids is that they have a certain amount of shear stress acting on it because of the internal friction between fluid layers and their relative velocities. So, they have finite amount of viscosity. Now, all fluids, they are all fluids that we come across, they are actually real fluids. Okay. So, we have discussed about ideal fluid and real fluid. Next, Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid. Okay. So, the fluids which obey this Newton's law of viscosity, okay, this that is the shear stress is proportional to the rate of change of velocity with respect to the separation distance between fluid layers, this law, they are called as Newtonian fluids. Okay, the fluids which obey the Newton's law of viscosity, they are real fluids, while the fluids which do not obey Newton's law of viscosity, they are non-Newtonian fluids. So, for Newtonian fluids, the shear stress is proportional to the rate of change of uh, velocity with respect to the separation distance and for non-Newtonian fluids, it is something like this, tau is equal to mu du by dy to the power n, a non-linear relationship. Okay, so, this is for non-Newtonian fluid. Okay, here by mistake I have written Newtonian, it is for non-Newtonian fluids. Okay, for Newtonian fluids it is this, for non-Newtonian fluids this is this. Next is the ideal plastic fluid. So, the ideal plastic fluid is one which has a constant stress called as yield stress acting on them along with that. Okay the shear stress between the fluid layers is proportional to the velocity gradient. Velocity gradient means this du by dy, the rate of change of velocity with respect to the separation distance. That is called as velocity gradient. But what separates it from the Newtonian fluids is that they have a constant yield stress along with it, acting along with it. So, the stress formula for the ideal plastic fluid is something like this. Tau is equal to constant yield stress plus mu du by dy. So, if we take this constant yield stress out of this equation, it will become a Newtonian fluid. But here, because of this constant yield stress, it becomes the ideal plastic fluid. Okay. Now, if we try to plot the behavior of these fluids on a graph with uh, the x axis or the horizontal axis as the velocity gradient which is the rate of change of velocity between adjacent fluid layers with respect to their separation distance and on the y axis we have the shear stress then we can plot them as this. So, we already know that for ideal fluids the shear stress is 0. So, here this x axis is for the ideal fluid. It means shear stress tau is 0. This is the ideal fluid, this horizontal line or the x axis. For Newtonian fluid, the shear stress is directly proportional to the uh, velocity gradient. So, for Newtonian fluid, it is a straight line passing through the origin okay? and the constant of proportionality is mu, the slope mu. Then for non-Newtonian fluid, it is beha the behavior is something like this which is non-linear behavior. So, the non-Newtonian fluid, this is the plot and for ideal plastic fluid, they have a constant yield stress, but along with that, it also obeys the Newton's law of viscosity, which is the shear stress is proportional to the velocity gradient. So, this is also a straight line with some initial yield stress value. This is the plot of ideal plastic fluid, which is similar to the plot of Newtonian fluid. But for Newtonian fluid, it starts from the origin. It has no previous 
value of stress but for ideal plastic fluid the nature is same it is a straight line with some slope but it has this initial value okay it starts from here not from the origin so this value initial stress value which it has it is called as yield stress okay constant yield stress and along with that it obeys it is directly proportional to the velocity gradient from here it is directly proportional to the velocity gradient so it is also a straight line with some slope starting from some higher value so this is the ideal fluid with stress zero this x axis this is the newtonian fluid starting from the origin a straight line and it is proportional the stress is proportional to the velocity gradient this is the non newtonian fluid with the non linear relationship and this is the plastic fluid which has a initial stress value it is also a straight line with some slope but it starts from a higher value as compared to the newtonian fluid okay so here we have categorized the various uh, fluids on the basis of viscosity and shear stress depending on uh, their various uh, properties so and this is the plot of the various fluids so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much